What we are going to do today is clean up the black tip shark jaws that Brady caught. We just tossed them in a bag and froze them after we cleaned up that shark. And uh, what we're going to do today is just kind of clean this thing up. How we're going to do that, first thing we're going to do is try to get all the flesh off the set of jaws. There's a big chunk of flesh behind both sets of jaws. We've really got to cut that out. That's kind of a pretty tedious process. We're going to use um, our outdoor edge filet knife here, um, or skinning boning knife, I guess I should say. And these are great. They have replaceable razors, so when they get when they get dull, we can switch them out. Um, we're also going to use just a couple of different knives. I've got some smaller blades and then a filleting knife and just try to get some of this flesh off. Most likely use a pair of needle nose pliers. I've just got some fishing pliers here. I'm going to throw on a pair of plastic gloves just so my hands aren't getting super, super stinky. Once we get all the flesh off, what we're going to do is we're going to put the shark in a mixture of 50% hydrogen peroxide and 50% water for two days. Um, throughout the course of two days, we're going to just pull it out of the the water mixture, the hydrogen peroxide mis mixture, and make sure that we're pulling off any residual tissue that's on there. And then we might do a dip in a little bit of bleach, like 25% bleach, 75% water, just for a very, very short period of time, about 30 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, just to uh, kill any bacteria and clean it up. And then we'll prop them open. Um, so this is the first one we've ever done. Hopefully it turns out pretty good. Um, you will find out when we're all done. All right, so, like I said, this is our first try at this. Hopefully it goes good. There's actually quite a bit of flesh on the back of these gums. It's you gotta be super careful because sharks have so many roll, rows of teeth that uh, you don't want to be pulling out those back rows. The flesh comes off relatively easy. It's actually kind of hard to do this with gloves on, to be honest with you. I don't usually wear gloves when I'm cleaning stuff but and shark is really honestly not that fishy pretty easy fish it's not very fishy to cook it's, it's a great form of protein a lot of people get pretty fired up when they hear about people harvesting sharks but there is a ton of sharks out there Obviously, whenever a state's game and fish department sets a regulation, they, they know how many are in the water and what species are thriving. This shark was caught, obviously, in Florida. And during the shark run or migration, there's hundreds of thousands of sharks that run the coast. And you'd be shocked on how close those sharks are to people. I mean, they're in a foot of water or less sometimes. And there's, I mean, don't be scared of going in the water by any means, but there's a lot of shark attacks every year in Florida and Texas, California. The number of shark attacks compared to the number of people in the water are pretty, pretty minimal. But again, you know, just like, just like anything, Overpopulation is overpopulation. If there's too much of any animal in an ecosystem, it's going to lead to problems and conflict. Not to say that there's an overpopulation of sharks, but there's definitely not a shortage. Black tips are one of the best sharks out there to, to harvest for food. They're absolutely delicious. And we will do a cook segment on black tip. They're great, great protein. 
pretty delicious. You don't want to eat shark every single day because they do carry or hold a lot of mercury in them. So it's not a not a food you want to eat every single day by any means, but every now and then it's pretty pretty good. So basically all we're doing here is just kind of trimming this flesh away, obviously. Getting as much of it as we can off of here. Trying to pull all this flesh behind the gums off the back set of teeth. So you can see these back set the back set of teeth back in here. It's pretty pretty cool. And of course this wasn't a giant shark by any means. It was a 40 inch shark, which is you know decent size for a black tip by all means, but not a, not a big monster tiger shark or bull shark. So with it being a younger animal, we gotta kinda take our time with it and make sure we get we get all this flesh off without cutting through the jaws. Be honest with you, like I said, I underestimated how slimy this guy was gonna be. I, mean, I think it's because I have these gloves on, but also don't like having fishy hands for two days after I clean clean a bunch of fish. Just taking all this stuff and putting it back in that ziploc that the shark was in, the jaws were in. You just want to scrape all this flesh off. You can always come back and get some of this stuff later with sandpaper, but I'd like to get it all off and all done. You want to be really careful around the hinge of the jaw. Don't get too too wild around that hinge of the jaw because obviously if you do that you might potentially break where that hinge is at but just this big these big old chunks of flesh like this you just want this stuff off of there the more of this stuff you get off during the hydrogen peroxide process the easier it's going to be to to clean it then you know just limiting our stages I've seen people at the end of the process take some epoxy and put epoxy on their skulls and it kind of cleans up some of these accidents you may have when you if you potentially nick some of this tissue um, or some of the bone I'm sorry but I don't think we're gonna do that um, I mean we'll see if I mess it up by all means then we'll figure out a way to make it look prettier but I, I'm hopefully not planning on doing that and like I said this is a super tedious process it'll take us a couple hours so what we'll do is I'll just keep working on this and uh, we'll get back here in just a little teeny bit alright so that's a pretty tedious job. As you can see, I pulled off the gums on the back, and you can really see those secondary and tertiary rows and all those rows of teeth. I went a little too deep and actually popped a tooth out, which is pretty common. Kind of watch the hinges. You don't want to cut all the way through the hinges. As you can see, there's still a lot of flesh on there, and there's definitely some membrane and some tissue on there. But I didn't want to scrape too much just because with a sharp knife you're gonna start carving that stuff up a little bit but I think it looks pretty good as time goes on you know and it's soaking in the in the uh, peroxide I'll take it out and we'll scrape it up a little bit 
get some of that residual tissue out because we're going to soak it for two days. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a 50-50 mix of peroxide and water. I'm going to use an old dishwashing detergent tub just because I don't want to I don't want to stink something up. I mean, glass is glass, it'll clean up, but sometimes it's easier to toss it away. So, obviously this is peroxide, just regular peroxide. I'm going to go two cups at first, and we'll see how it mixes. And we'll just put the jaws in the mixture. We'll go two cups peroxide and two cups of water and that should cover it up pretty decent that's just the peroxide so we'll add a little bit of water and then we'll go two cups of water in there so 50 50 mix and that covers it up really good I think that'll be pretty good obviously that's gonna lighten that that up a huge amount, that's what makes it white. I don't think sharks are super greasy to be honest with you. I'm not positive, but sometimes if you want to get some of that grease out, you could put on dishwashing soap or something in there. Um, but you can see it's already eating that tissue off of there. It's cleaning it up super, super quick. So We'll just give it a few hours, we'll pull it out, get a toothbrush, scrape some of that excess flesh off of there, and just see how it looks as time goes on. I think it's going to turn out pretty good, but I'll let you know. Maybe even toss your little baby tooth in there and see what happens. Just the little guy. Alright. Alright. These shark jaws have now been soaking in this mixture for about oh about four hours now it was pretty wild because immediately after I put it in we could have started scraping tissue off of there but I thought I'd just give it a really good long soak and then we could kind of get a lot of this flesh off I'm gonna try to use a couple different things to pull some of this extra meat off I'm gonna use just a regular knife not so much a filleting knife and see if I can maybe get some of this flesh off with a slightly less sharp knife so that way I'm not digging into the bone because it's getting pretty brittle and I called it bone you know obviously it's cartilage not bone so I'm gonna try to see if I can just get a little bit of this flesh off of here and it's working alright I'm doing it over some grocery bags so that way makes for a slightly easier cleanup. You want to do this outside or in a sink or in a bathtub just so you're not making a giant giant mess. And it's working pretty decent as you can see we're just getting little bits of this extra flesh and sinew and meat off of here. I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning it. I just want to get it real real loose. I'm going to do this about every oh four or five hours I guess and just make sure that I'm getting as much of this tissue off of there as I can. That way it whitens up better obviously and that way when it dries you don't have big dry chunks of meat on there that will start rotting and stink stink your set of jaws up talked to a buddy of mine who has beetles dermistid beetles and you know he's done paddlefish and he does a lot of deer and all kinds of mammals but sharks are obviously cartilaginous as are paddlefish, but for some reason it seems like those dermistid beetles will eat through the shark jaws. You know, if any of you guys out there are taxidermists or have done that before and it, done it with 
good results, leave a comment below because I'd like to know, you know, what some of your techniques are. Because obviously this being the first one I've ever done, I'm just kind of experimenting a little bit. Did a little bit of research on YouTube and just coming up with a game plan on how I want to do this particular set. But it's coming along alright. So far so good. All this gummy stuff on here is kind of nasty stuff. A little bit gooey. But it's peeling off pretty good. I've got a little toothbrush and some scrubbers here too. But I don't think I'm quite ready for those yet. We'll just kind of keep working this tissue as much as we can. Get as much of this gunk off of here as we can. Like I said, you can see some of that stuff right there. I'm not too worried about getting it out of the mixture because it'll dissolve, but I want to loosen it off of here. That way every time I go to scrape it, more of it comes off. So I'll do this for a few minutes, toss it back in the mixture, and then uh, we'll pull it out again in a little bit. We'll see you in just a little bit. All right, we have had the shark in that mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water for about two days, a little over two days. I've been scraping off the tissue as we go along several times, and you can still see there's quite a bit of tissue on there, just like little pieces here and there. But what I'm going to do after this is disinfected and dried is I'll probably take some sandpaper and just kind of brush that stuff off, some fine grit sandpaper. Um, so now the next step is we're going to put the, the shark in some bleach, um, some bleach water. We don't want to have that mix too strong because it'll eat those teeth. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix three parts water to one part bleach. So that's 25% bleach, 75% water. So I already put six cups of water in here. So we're going to put two cups of bleach. Not full cups, but these little purple glasses. Bleach will eat everything, so we don't want to use a ton of this. There's one cup. And we're only going to soak these for about half an hour at a time. And we're going to pull them out about every half an hour and just make sure they're doing okay. Because the bleach will eat those teeth. This is pretty much just to disinfect these teeth. So we're going to check our time. And we're going to make sure we only put these babies in for about an hour. And then we'll yank them out and then we'll set them. Alright. The jaws have been in the bleach and water now for half an hour. Going to yank them out of there. We'll have a look and see what they look like. They look pretty good. Getting pretty white. A little bit foamy. Not sure if I should rinse these off or leave that bleach on there. I think I'm just going to leave the bleach on there as I set everything. So, how we're going to set these is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take a little cardboard box. A lot of people use styrofoam, it would probably be a lot easier, but I couldn't find a chunk of styrofoam that I would want to use. And what you're going to do is you're going to set your jaws on the box. Because they flex a whole lot, you want to set them the way you want them to look when they dry. And to keep them in that position, we're going to take 
some chopsticks. I'm going to punch the chopsticks, maybe, through the box. That's probably why they use styrofoam. just position these the way I want them to be positioned. Now I'm not looking for anything super fancy, I just want them open. So I'm just going to prop them open. And I think if I just open them up, they'll look exactly the way I want them. All these teeth are kind of flexible right now, so you want to be a little bit cautious when you're propping these things up. So, let me take my little fork. Start my hole. Pop my chopsticks in there. And there we go. So as you can see, they're propped up fairly decent. Kind of the way I want them to look when we're done. I might actually stick a couple more sets of chopsticks in there just to make sure it's opened up a little bit more. I don't want them to shrink up when they dry. But in the same breath, I don't want them to be wide open look kind of goofy. I want them to look pretty natural. So once we get these set up you want to dry these things in a non sunny area so I'm gonna probably stick them in the garage um, just so just in case they stink a little bit the wife's not losing it on me and then we'll uh, dry them out for a few days and see what they look like see if I have to clean them up with a little sandpaper or how they look and then we'll go to the next step All right, got these jaws shaped the way I want them. Got some chopsticks in there. They look pretty good. Let them dry for a little bit, and then we'll go from there. Jaws are looking good. One thing I wanted to show you, see how on this side it looks real clean? This side, there's a little bit of a gash in there, and it's kind of scraped up a bit. That's because I scraped in a lot of that tissue, pulled off a lot of that sinew, and went a little bit too deep. Um, that last soak in the bleach, right there's some connective tissue, that was some meat, and you can't really take that off of the joints because otherwise the bones will fall apart, but it cleaned up really, really nice and dried out with that 30, 30 minute soak in the bleach. I would recommend not scraping as much, you know, don't worry about getting every little bit of sinew and, and tendon and flesh off of there because that bleach is going to eat a huge amount of that. There's another one of those joints where there was some tissue. You can see how that cleans up really, really good. So the next set I do, I'm definitely going to scrape less, um, which will save you a ton of time. Um, so kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your set of shark jaws. And I'm going to let these babies dry just a little bit longer because they're still a little bit wet. But I just sniffed them and they smell like bleach. I didn't rinse them off after I soaked them in bleach. I kind of left that bleach on there, that bleach water solution. Um, but uh, I'll give them another 24 hours and then we'll see what they look like when I put them in you know, the final position. Alright, here's the final product. You can see Brady in the reflection. Turned out pretty good. We got a 11 by 14 by 3 inch deep shadow box. The shark jaws were about two and a quarter inches deep. So whenever, if you do a shadow box, make sure that you get an extra deep one. Just put a really cool little 5x7 picture in there. I didn't frame around it. it looked kind of better with the black backing. Got the shadow box off of Amazon. Um, hooked the shark jaws up with two-sided two -sided Velcro. That way you could pull them off if you want to. And that stuff works pretty good. It'll hold about five pounds, and we've done that before. But the finished product looks pretty good. What do you think? You happy with it? Yeah. Yeah? It's Your nice first one. shark. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Yep, good job. 
All right, we're going to go hang it up on your wall. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And if you have any questions about the process, by all means, leave us a comment. Have a great day.